Georgia, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and congratulations on this wonderful project, The Uncertain Kingdom. Maybe just first off, you could just start by introducing it a bit. If for people who don't know anything about The Uncertain Kingdom, what can they expect to find um, when, when they tune in? So The Uncertain Kingdom is a collection of 20 short films from 20 different directors about the UK. Um, they came together um, all through last year, every, every film took a slightly different length of time to make. They're all very different from each other. And what we were trying to do with the whole project was respond to the fact that there was so much going on in the world. Um, it's hard to remember now because of, um, because of Corona, it's like wiped our memory of anything else. But there was so much going on in the world, the environment, um, the fallout of Me Too, um, systemic racism, um, just so many issues that we wanted to address. But feature films take so long to make. And the budgets are so high you have to be quite cautious sometimes and we just thought with shorts we could make a whole bunch of them give people loads of creative freedom and they could respond really quickly and urgently to everything that was going on so now we have this really diverse collection of shorts about 20 different topics looking at them from 20 different angles um, that is a snapshot of the uk as we see it now and you say it's a real diverse array of filmmakers and films and locations so how did you go about selecting these you know how did you nail down the 20 that you're going to include well it was exceptionally difficult um as you can imagine um the initial idea um that uh, the, the other producers john jenks and izzy freer and i had had was that we would rough we would get like roughly 10 by inviting them so more established filmmakers and we would just say hello you know so and so would you like to do a film for us and then the other 10, we would have an open call and people would apply and we would, we would select from the applications. But then what ended up happening was we got so many applications, over a thousand teams applied, um, and we got so many applications and there were so many that were so compelling that actually that balance ended up shifting and we ended up taking more from the open call and having fewer that we invited because when it came to it, we got more excited about having more new filmmakers whose perspectives we were less familiar with in film and who could show us something completely new than we felt about maybe more established filmmakers whose whose views we were we knew and you know which of the films have really stood out for you or, or which would you say kind of like you know get, get the broadest view of, of of the response to the brief if you like you can't make me choose between my kids. That's not fair. <laughs> um, no, I don't have I don't have a favorite film because it, I you know I was so there for all of them and uh, uh, just seeing them all come together. There's there's no favorites. Um, but I think now because of what's happening in in the world, I think the meaning of some of the films has changed and some films that felt. Um, kind of this is a difficult thing to talk about but kind of generalized previously like we have a film called left coast um which is about um uh, food banks um in the uk and um that previously it felt there was something almost timeless about it the cruelty of of inequality um but now in the context of covid it's so urgent so some of the meanings of the film have has kind of shifted i guess um but to, but I think it's seeing them together. You know, it's a it's a long project. You know, there's there's twenty films. They're in two blocks of of ten each. Um, it's a long thing to watch. But when you do see them all together over a couple of evenings or maybe in more evenings, watching them all together, the amount that you see about the UK and those different perspectives, I I just think it's it's so exciting. And I can say that because I didn't actually produce any of them, so I'm I'm a little bit distant. It's not it's not boasting. I think. And I think it's interesting what you you hit on there. It's like they I mean the timing of it because I guess it's something slightly frustrating. You know, wanting to do this quite like immediate reaction to to this mm. situation, kind of like the post Brexit world. Kind of, you know, this festival of Brexit that was supposed to happen and things like that. And now it's suddenly like been overtaken by COVID. But you can also see in other respects that actually it's shone even a more of a light on you know, the have and the have nots, not just here in the UK, but around the world. And Absolutely. it's given us a bit of space actually to reflect on some of these issues. So it might be there's even more of an appetite to hear these stories. I hope so. I mean, you know, it, it feels co very cold to see an upside in the horror that is going on at the moment um, and the level of injustice that we're seeing. Um, 
it's just it's just awful to think that um i hope if anything comes out of the films that they do what we originally thought they might which is that you know when you watch a film you can be transported into somebody else's world and there are 20 worlds that we've presented and they're you know roughly 15 minutes or less each and there's a chance to to see somebody else's experience of life become more empathetic as a person see something new learn something new um and have a be entertained while you're doing it so i i hope i hope that they have some they have some use in the world now yeah and what would you say some of the key issues that come out of it because i know that you know there is a range there like some are like more documentary like some are quite like humorous comedy but like what would you say some of the emerging themes are that, that, that come out of the, the 20 films i think for me and obviously you know the, I, I have my own bias so it, it's only going to reflect that but i think for me the the overwhelming themes that come through are, are one the amount of injustice that we're living through in so many different ways and how much work is going to have to be done to resolve it and how um it's not it's not it's it's not enough to not mean to you have to mean not to perpetuate this injustice you have to act against it um and the other feel the other kind of feeling i took from it was just how much um humans want and thrive on and need community and how we're all seeking it in so many different ways and even the tougher of the films that we what that we've got um you know like left coast which is about the food banks like the conversation which is about interracial relationships like motherland which is about people being sent home to jamaica even though it's in no way where they're from um it it's how much people want to be in a community connected to each other feeling at home feeling welcome how much we will need that and i think yeah at a time like this when we're all yeah i'm talking to you digitally when we're all disconnected that that feels even more um powerful and were you surprised you know if you give people the same brief you might expect there to be some like similarities were you shocked by like how like in different directions people went like some oh, completely so abstract and kind of you know like very humorous and then some you know very kind of realistic so was that something that really like was great for you to see yeah it was an absolute thrill i mean the the commissioning process was so eye-opening because obviously you know john and izzy and i are you know reasonably engaged people and we had our own ideas about what people might submit um but then you get over a thousand applications you know let's say two three people submitting together in a team that's a thousand perspectives i mean the number of topics that were covered and it was it was just every every application we were reading was just like wow and then some of them it was like where are you going with this you know this really i just don't i just can't get in i don't understand what you're trying to tell me um but some of them were just so even the films that we couldn't commission because you know sometimes somebody pitches you essentially a feature film idea and you're like there's just no way you can do that but even when that happens it's still a treat to read it because you've gone on this little journey and they tell you the story and you learn about their perspective so yeah it's a it's a thrill and what do you hope that people are going to take away from watching this because like we say it's hitting on some really big meaty issues that i think are even more relevant now than perhaps they were sometimes we look back at the discussions we're having about brexit and they almost seem yeah. slightly silly it's almost, it's almost nostalgic isn't yeah. it like, remember, when, remember then when that was our problem <laughs> yeah yeah it's but, mad. But even more pertinent now so what do you hope from watching this people will take away because and i think that in some of the stories there's, there is an amazing sense of hope and optimism yeah as well as shining a light on, on injustice so what do you think people go away thinking I really hope that people watch them and then talk to each other about them, whether that's people who've watched them literally in their own house or, you know, maybe friends that have, might have seen them, because I think that's what we always hope people would do, would be gather around them and talk about them and talk about the issues. You know, we intended the films to be a jumping off point for conversation. It can be quite hard to have some of these big conversations about these big issues. We can feel shy. We can feel like we don't have the language. Um, but having a film and being able to say to talk about that character or to talk about that event it can be a route in and i really hope that people do that and feel um inspired to inspired to talk about them um and also i hope that people are entertained i hope that people have a few hours being transported out of their living room i mean that's that's what you hope 
and in that sense, do you see that there is an amazing role for film and culture more broadly for shining a light on on these different issues that, you know, reading the news, you know, following politics, you know, it can all just seem a bit of a farce. And then actually to kind of open up our ways of thinking and actually sort of get glimpses of people's lives and people's, you know, different ways of, of looking at these issues is actually incredibly powerful and can actually be have more of an impact than just you know reading statistics and and, and news articles all the time absolutely i mean there's there's a place for both you know we wouldn't want to do away with either with either one of them um but i think in in times like this i think we all go to broadly the arts you know whether that's that wonderful family that sang lame is to us with different lyrics you know whatever their names were i can't remember or, or something that's been, you know, put together like, like our collection. Um, I think we all look for that to, as ways to connect to each other, to see other stories, to see other, other, other ways of living um, and to relate. You know, we want that human community. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased. I think the Uncertain Kingdom does offer that. And especially because it's short, you get so much of that in such a short period of time, you know, so much travel through so many different worlds. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's so essential. It's so essential when we're bombarded, especially in the 24 hour news cycle where we're just bombarded with this statistic, that statistic. And it can, like you say, it just feels like a soup sometimes and you just don't know what to pull out from it. And then, yeah, if you, you know, taking a film of ours like Motherland, you know, if you're reading an article about um, the Windrush scandal and it feels very remote from your life, and then you're able to watch a film like Motherland where these three men explain what, that seemingly quite dry process of deportation actually means for an individual. It brings it all home and you understand what's happening and hopefully feel more motivated to engage with the issue. And, and what do you hope for the, for the future of the project? Because obviously not been able to show it kind of in cinemas or anything like that, it's only been digital. So is that the hope that at some point you'd be able to, you know, have people in a room watching it together? Oh, definitely. I mean, we before before COVID, before this happened, we had a couple of test screenings and um, that was just such a wonderful experience, you know, just having people in a room watching them. It's what you want as a filmmaker, you know, as a, as a person who makes a piece of art, you want people to come around it together and see it. And I think, yeah, I mean, we can't wait to do that. We still want to do community screenings as soon as we're allowed. Um, and then beyond that, you know, the life of the project, it, it exists now as a kind of time capsule, as every piece of art does for its time. Um, we're very lucky it's been um, inducted, if that's the word, I don't know, it's been taken into the BFI archive. So it will exist, you know, into the future, which is a lovely thing to think about. And then the other legacy I hope the project will have is that, you know, some of our filmmakers at the beginning of their career, I really hope and I fully expect that they will go on to do great things and we'll be able to say, oh, you know, look at that early short that they did, which I, I like to think of that. And for you yourself, are you working on other projects already or are they all on pause? You know, what can we expect from you next? Yeah, I mean, the corona imploded my professional career, which is a, you know, or the year of it anyway, which is a very champagne problem. So I've got nothing to complain about. But um, I was three weeks into prep for a feature film, um, which hopefully we'll pick up again as soon as we're, we're allowed. And then I've just got, you know, different things kind of in development in the background and actually lockdown is fine the development you know it's just you at your desk and reading and getting back to people so that's fine okay well that's been amazing thank you so much for sharing all that with us and congratulations that's my pleasure. on a wonderful project and yeah thank you very much hopefully we can get out into cinemas <laughs> at some point fingers, fingers crossed <laughs> thank you fingers so crossed. Much. thank you for talking to me bye thanks georgia that was lovely thank you